Hey friends, great to be back with you. I want to continue reflecting on part of the prophetic word the Lord gave me as we entered into 2016. If you'd like to catch the other video blogs on that topic, you can find it on our website. If you'd like to read the whole prophetic word, the audio and the uh, written part of that prophetic word is available on our website. 2016, this is what the Lord was saying, will be a year of unprecedented prosperity for the people of God. Great, great wealth will begin to come to the to those who have been standing in great faith for provision and overflow. On this topic of prosperity and kingdom finances, sometimes the question is, what, what should I do or what does it mean if I'm not experiencing the blessing of God in the area of finances or overflow as the Bible speaks? The first thing I wanna say is, we know that the Bible is true. I know that's a simple statement, but it is. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all of my needs is true. Deuteronomy 28, that if you obey the voice of God, these blessings will come upon you. So we, we start at that place and we know that the Bible is true, but we also know our life is not just in uh, one moment or one season. So as we discuss these biblical principles of maybe why you're not experiencing the overflow, I want to encourage you, don't judge your life by the season that you're in or even by a temporary state that you're in. We know Joseph experienced the overflow of God, but at one time he was a slave and he was owned by another man and he, he was not a rich man, but he eventually experienced the overflow of God. We know that King David was a very, very wealthy man, but at one time he was in the cave of, the, of Adullam. He was, he was fleeing Saul. So I want to encourage you not to judge your life by the moment or the season that you're in, but also to uh, not uh, li not to uh, not to uh, expect just the current experience that you have, but expect what the Word of God has said. And so with that in mind, I also want to encourage you, these biblical principles are not to put condemnation or disparage anyone, but I also believe that the Bible teaches us of what, why we may not be experiencing all that God intends for us. And here's some principles that I found in the Word of God. Number one and two are connected with each other. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek God's kingdom first, and all these things will be added unto us. Many times people are, are trying to use biblical principles to simply accumulate material things, to meet their own desires, to meet uh, a, a place that needs to uh, be healed in their heart. I, 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 I am something because I have certain things. And so that becomes a pursuit, but the pursuit must always be God's kingdom first. The second principle we find in Scripture, in uh, James 1.17, the Bible teaches us that a double-minded man can receive nothing from the Lord. Sometimes people have one system in the system of the world, which is the Babylonian system, which is man's way of trying to do things, and they have another foot in the system of the kingdom of heaven. And, and uh, sometimes we see people that make decisions simply defined by the five senses. What does that mean? That means maybe you have a person who makes a decision, makes a career change simply for the fact that they're going to make more money, simply for the fact that it has more prestige, but they never ask God, am I really supposed to take that job? Another example of maybe somebody who's double-minded that immediately when things begin to get tight financially or, they, or, they, uh, or they're struggling in a certain area, they back up on their giving or they stop giving their tithe which is their seed uh, which were well the tithe is required of the Lord but they stop giving offerings which is their seed for their future so uh, two principles that I often find people don't seek God's kingdom first and the second thing is they're double-minded and they look at uh, the principles of, of kingdom prosperity as a get-rich-quick seam what we are talking about here is a lifestyle of prosperity in every way so two principles they uh, not seeking king, God's kingdom first. And then the second, of course, is related. It's a hard issue is they're double minded in the things of God. The third principle that I find is, is this in Genesis one, God mandates all of us, all God's children to have a God given assignment to steward the earth. And that means if you are a uh, if you are a lawyer, doctor, teacher, whatever you may be, you are as equally called into the ministry as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher. We are all called to the work of the ministry. In fact, that's what the job of the fivefold ministry is, is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And so 
We must find our God-given assignment. We must find where God has called us. Number one, because it's where, where the talents that God has given us will flourish the most, but it is also where our divine prosperity is found. If you find the assignment that God has given you, that is where your prosperity is found. And so many people are in professions they don't like because it's what maybe their mom did or their, uh, or their father did. And, and, and it's not what they're suited for and they find themselves frustrated, burned out, but they also find that they don't have the provision of God. Here's the will of God for your life. The will of God is for you to discover the life that Jesus came to bring you and so that you could represent him accurately and in the middle of pursuing God's kingdom first that you would find that you would find not only your greatest joy but you would find the prosperity of heaven on your behalf. So I want to encourage you let let these print evaluate yourself according to these principles. The Apostle Paul admonished us in 2 Corinthians 13 to test ourselves, to examine ourselves, whether we are in the faith. And so I want to encourage you, is the kingdom of God your primary ambition? Are you double-minded? Are you uh are you in the assignment that God has called you in? Even as uh, I, I say this, I, I just believe there's some of you watching this that even in this next season, God is going to cause a transition because you realize you're not in the place that God has called you to be. And so I bless you this month to seek God's kingdom first. I bless you this month to not be double-minded. I bless you to be fully convinced in everything that God has called you to do and to experience the overflow that scripture speaks about.